Hello again, I'm Anders, and today we're going to try and figure out the best way to paint your army. So sit down and let's talk some hobby. Over the last year or so, I've learned something about myself. I hate painting armies. All my favorite projects from the last couple of years have been either heroes or monsters or terrain, and I've really struggled getting through all the troops. So, with multiple armies needing reinforcements, or just to get started, I wanted to take some time to practice the most common techniques for painting large groups of models that you need to fill out your armies. Over the next two videos, we're going to take a look at two different approaches and then take some time to discuss and compare them. And so, for part one today, we're going to look at probably the most common technique for painting armies, and that's batch painting. Alright, so, quick explanation. Batch painting is generally the process of taking a large amount of models and breaking them down to smaller groups that are easier to paint at a time. For instance, if I have a group of, say, 36 orcs I need to paint, I'll usually break them down to groups of 4 to 8 models um, in order to get through them. In this experiment, I will be batch painting some more 100 orcs from my Dolgal Door army. I have 12 ready to go and will be working on them in two groups of six. During this, I will track how much time I spend on each step, calculate how much time that comes out to per model, and then compare it to the next test results. I've decided to include the entire process to most accurately represent my process, and so will be doing the following steps. 1. Prepping the models. 2. Basing the models. 3. Priming. 4. Painting and finishing the bases and five, varnish. For simplicity's sake, I will only be splitting them into two batches for steps four and five, and the rest of the time I'll be working on them all at once, as this better represents my normal working process. One last detail. I'm not going to be including any of the drying times for things like glue, primer, or varnish, as these can take a little bit, and I generally will be doing something else during that time. In short, we're only going to be tracking the time we actually spend working on the models. And with that, let's get started. Part one. Prepping the models. Being from the Hobbit range of miniatures, these guys are actually quite good and have very minimal flash or mold lines that need cleaning up. Also, I got these ones secondhand, and so they were actually mostly built already, and I didn't have to do much time assembling. However, as I mentioned in my previous video, I really do try not to have any doubles in my army, so I did spend a little bit of time quickly converting them. Mainly, I sliced a bunch of them at the waist, switched a few hands around, and then reorganized the pieces so that they came out a bit different. And with that, the models are prepped and ready for basing. Total time, 22 minutes and 29 seconds. Part 2, basing. I'm one of those people who base their models before I prime, as I feel it helps to solidify the material and lock it more in place. Also, I base the rest of this army on resin bases that I sculpted and cast myself. So I usually then cut off the tabs that they're attached to and pin them in place. However, I forgot that not only have I run out of bases, I've run out of resin, so I did have to pivot and adapt here. So instead, we're going to be creating matching bases on their existing ones by sculpting in some brickwork with milliput and then filling in the holes with a homemade basing paste. I also added a few rocks here and there to add a bit more variety to them by just super gluing on some ones I found out in my garden. Once that's all done and dry, it's on to priming. Total time, 50 minutes and 6 seconds. Part 3, Priming. To prime my minis, I just used some poster putty to stick them to an old piece of MDF I had lying around before taking them outside to hit them with some aerosol primer. I first hit them with a grey primer to give them a solid undercoat before then dusting them with white from above once they're dry in order to give them a simple Zanthal highlight. My white primer was actually giving me a bit of trouble as I think the nozzle was somewhat clogged and so it ended up giving me quite a spotty finish. However, luckily it didn't leave any texture, so I just let it dry and moved on. Total time, 8 minutes. Part 4, painting and finishing the bases. And here's where we break them into batches. I first select 6 orcs and start laying base coats down using some contrast paints. For batch 1, I started with the skin. I mixed Basilicanum Grey with some Gilliam Flesh and then finally some Draconoff Nightshade to add a hint of blue. I tend to try and mix up these skin colors for my orcs as there is a lot of variation in the movies, and so I chose to do this whole batch of six in this one color as I haven't used it before for this army. Then I moved on to the bone slash leathery armor, and for this I used Skeleton Horn. This goes on kind of thin and splotchy with the Xenothal, considering how light the contrast is, but after a wash, it looks good enough. 
Next, I started painting up the rest of their clothes using a variation of Black Templar, Saigor Brown, and Gord Runter Fur. Next, I did the bases using some more Basilicam Grey for the stones, as well as some more Saigor Brown for the earth. Now that all the contrast paints are done, I move on to my favorite part, which is actually painting the bone. I use Pallid Witch Flesh to start this off by picking out all the bones on the armor before painting all the metal bits with lead belcher. I pick out the rest of the details like hair and straps with a variety of other colors from Dawnstone to a shafty bone, before hitting the whole models with a wash of brown from Agress Earthshade, and then a black wash of Gnome Oil on the metals and stone. After that, I re-highlight the bone with Pallid Witch Flesh again before picking out the mouths with a bit of Flesh Terror's Red and their eye sockets with Black Templar. I then pick out the teeth using a shabby bone and dot the eyes with two small spots of yellow on either side. Then I finally highlight the armor with some Stormhost Silver and go back to clean up any other mistakes I may have made. For instance, I thought the faces turned out a little bit dull, so I highlighted around the eyes with a bit of Dawnstone to help bring them out. Going on to bases, I first stuck them onto some paint pots using poster putty and painted the rims black. I like to do two thin coats of this to keep them smooth. Next, we coat the ground areas of the bases in PVA before adding some interesting undergrowth looking stuff using some lichen and hobby moss before coating the whole thing in some flock. The flock I'm using here is actually just the same moss as before, but sieved into a fine turf. Finally, to lock it all in, I water down some more PVA using a bit of heavily diluted matte medium, and then use a pipette to dribble this over top of the basing material so it absorbs. And with that, batch 1 is done. Batch 1 took 3 hours and 20 minutes to paint, and 21 minutes and 0.75 seconds for basing. For batch 2, I ended up mixing up the process a little bit, as there was a couple things from the first round that I wasn't crazy about. Firstly, I painted out the sections of bones and around the eye with a bit of pure white before laying down base coats, as those were the areas I found were a bit dark in the final models. This meant that I didn't have to go back in like in the last batch and highlight around the eyes. After that, it was more or less the same. Some small differences include starting with the leather slash bone first and mixing up a different skin color using the same two paints, but leaning much more on the gilded flesh. After some base coats, washes, highlights, and bases, we're all done. In the end, batch 2 took me 2 hours, 52 minutes and 3 seconds to paint, and 18 minutes and 51 seconds to base. Part 6, Varnish. To varnish, I stick them back onto the same MDF stick and take them outside to give them a spray of Tester's Dull Coat. Generally, I do two thin coats of this, leaving a couple hours in between for them to dry. Time, 5 minutes. And with that, our final time is 7 hours, 56 minutes, and 49.75 seconds, which comes out to 39 minutes, 39.14 seconds per model. So what do I think about the process? Well, first of all, looking at the almost 8 hours it took to finish these models does feel like a lot when you lay it all out, but I am actually very happy with the results. Only 40 minutes per model is actually really not that bad to take them from bare plastic to fully painted, and while they might be a little bit messy here and there, they do fit perfectly in with the rest of my army. However, while I mostly did enjoy painting these, I also found it fairly frustrating. I feel like I found it hard to stick to a regimented pattern, and I frequently found myself getting distracted by individual little details. I feel like this threw off my rhythm here and there and ended up slowing me down. But by working on smaller batches, I was actually able to make some changes between groups and pivot on certain orders or colors such as the skin. However, doing batches of six meant there wasn't enough time for the contrast paints or washes to dry between steps, so I still did end up having to take a lot of breaks to wait for them. Finally, working to a schedule did take some of the fun out, and I did find that filming myself while working as well as documenting each step, a lot more work than I expected, and I feel like it did lead to some distractions and wasted time. In conclusion, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this, as I don't really have anything to compare it to yet. This is the first time I filmed myself painting, and while it does feel like a lot of hours when you lay it out, I do feel like I was more efficient in this process than I have been in a lot of projects. In the end, I am really happy with the final look. I love these models, and I'm really excited to fit these ones into my army, and finally get them on the table. Someday. Maybe. Anyways, this actually just makes me really interested in the next step in this process where we compare painting in individual batches to painting a whole army in one go. 
So be sure to check back in next time when we try that out and I give my final thoughts on how best to paint your army. In the meantime, feel free to leave a comment about whether or not you like batch painting, if you have any specific process or stuff you enjoyed that I didn't discuss, or how bad my hair is in this video. For now, I'm Anders, have a good one. Hey.